Kansas City is a good all-around team that wins many close games. With their newest ex-49er quarterback, Elvis Gerbach, taking command of the offense, Kansas City will be modifying their version of the West Coast offense to include more eye and shotgun formations. They've had a strong defense, which forces a lot of turnovers. Their defensive standout, Derek Thomas, plays a combination of outside linebacker and defensive end, giving Kansas City both 3-4 and 4-3 fronts. Depth is a concern if Kansas City is to be a contender. San Diego has followed a year of changing most of their players with a year of firing all of their coaches. This turnover leaves a great deal of question in how San Diego will perform on the field. Their offense has been erratic for the past few years, despite their outstanding wide receiver, Tony Martin. San Diego's success on defense is dictated by their exceptional linebacker, Junior Seau. However, the rest of the defense needs more consistency versus good running teams. Seattle is a possible candidate for the most improved team. Defensively, they've made some great free agent acquisitions in Chad Brown, Willie Williams, and Benny Blades. In the draft, they picked up an outstanding corner in Sean Springs who will make a quick impact in the NFL. To succeed on offense, they need to get the ball to their wide receivers more, especially the explosive Joey Galloway, to help take some pressure off their running back, Chris Warren. Despite Denver's loss in the playoffs, they're still a team to beat in the AFC. Their running back, Terrell Davis, is one of the best rushers in the NFL, and their quarterback, John Elway, is a great competitor who still has a few good years left before being enshrined in Canton. Defensively, they lack depth at linebacker, but have a great secondary anchored by Steve Atwater. They can shut down their opposition with equally strong defensive line with Michael Dean Perry, Alfred Williams, and newly acquired Neil Smith. Oakland will rely more on deep passing to put points on the board, but this may be by design. With the acquisition of a talented but temperamental quarterback, Jeff George, and outstanding speed at all the skill positions, it's time again to go vertical. Defensively, Oakland puts tremendous pressure on offenses at the point of attack with great defensive tackles, Chester McLaughlin and Russell Maryland. Injuries could be a concern for one of the league's oldest teams. Despite losing many players over the past two years, Pittsburgh is one of the best coached teams and should continue to be a tough opponent. They can dominate a game on defense and have a well-balanced attack on offense behind a solid front line, a powerful running back in Jerome Bettis, and don't forget, slash Cordell Stewart. Defensively, there are many uncertainties. The newcomers will have to play well if Pittsburgh wants to remain one of the AFC's best. Behind new defensive coordinator Dick LeBeau, Cincinnati is planning to switch to the 3-4 and use a full arsenal of zone blitz packages. With last year's talent and LeBeau's scheme, Cincinnati's defense should be able to give the team more chances to win. Their potent quarterback-receiver combination of Jeff Blake and Carl Pickens can put up some incredible numbers. However, Cincinnati will have to develop a better running game if they hope to keep their defense rested to win consistently. Houston's big offensive line and the Offensive Rookie of the Year, running back Eddie George, control and move the line of scrimmage downfield. This couple with the exciting young quarterback receiver combination of Steve McNair to Chris Sanders will have Houston scoring enough points to keep up with anyone. Defensively, they can stop the run and have a good secondary despite losing a couple of players in free agency. They've lacked the ability to provide a dominating pass rush, which has made them susceptible to comebacks. This year, they will seek to put more pressure on the quarterback. Injuries wrecked havoc on Baltimore's defense last year, forcing them to convert to the 3-4 a year ahead of schedule. In the offseason, they acquired several new rookies and a solid veteran lineman in Tony Saragusa. On offense, they had a career year from their quarterback, Vinny Testaverde, and he has the tools to do it again. However, Baltimore still lacks depth, especially in the offensive line, with key losses in free agency in Tony Jones and Steve Everett. For a team only in its third year, Jacksonville has a lot of talent. They proved they're no ordinary expansion team with last year's strong season finish and two impressive road wins in the playoffs. Their key to success on offense is their mobile quarterback, Mark Brunell, and he can get the ball downfield to his receivers, Keenan McCardle and Jimmy Smith, as well as tuck the ball away and run. Defensively, their secondary will continue to be under pressure, but the addition of an experienced cornerback, Deion Figures, and a steadily improving pass rush will make them a tough opponent. Once a team of aging veterans, Buffalo is starting to lose the core of a team that was successful in the early 90s. With the retirement of their quarterback, 
Buffalo loses the leader of the K-Gun and will now have to concentrate on establishing a running game. Defensively, they put tremendous pressure on opposing quarterbacks with Bryce Pop and Bruce Smith. As the season progresses and temperatures fall, it becomes increasingly more difficult to beat these guys in Buffalo. Indianapolis overcame a great deal of adversity last year to make the playoffs. Every starter on defense, the team's top two quarterbacks, most of the starting offensive line, and their young, talented running back, Marshall Falk, all missed at least one game due to injury. If Indy can stay healthy, this could be their year to break through. Defensively, they've lost some key talent over the past two years. However, the coaching staff puts together an effective game plan each week to take away their opponent's strengths. The Jimmy Johnson era continues to build momentum in South Florida with one of the league's youngest teams. Last year, Miami's rookie halfback, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, became the team's first 1,000-yard rusher since 1978. The balance attack out of the I formation helps take the pressure off of their future Hall of Fame quarterback, Dan Marino. The defense is anchored by a quick middle linebacker, Zach Thomas, and a revamped and experienced secondary that should provide more consistency. There's plenty of talent left on the defending AFC champions. However, Pete Carroll and the new coaching staff have a lot of work to do if New England is to return to the Super Bowl. Defensively, they are inconsistent when it comes to stopping a good air attack, but they showed signs of a good run defense down the stretch. Offensively, New England has the potential of scoring a lot of points and controlling the clock now that strong-arm quarterback Drew Bledsoe has gifted players around him like Curtis Martin, Terry Glenn, and Ben Coates. Is Bill Parcells the savior New York fans have been waiting for all these years? Offensively, they lack depth and need to stay healthy in order to do well. Look for their offensive line to play better as a team and give Neil O'Donnell and Adrian Morrell a chance to put up decent numbers. Defensively, these guys appear better than a 1-15 team. It may not be long before the new coaching staff makes this unit the strength behind a playoff contender. San Francisco gets it done on offense and defense. However, last year's early exit in the playoffs was not up to their standards. On offense, San Francisco has beefed up their offensive line to give their always high-rated quarterback, Steve Young, time to get the ball to their great wide receiver, Jerry Rice. Their big, experienced line will also look to make holes for their newly acquired running back, Garrison Hurst. San Francisco's defense is capable of carrying this team even if the offense struggles. With a host of pro bowlers in the defensive line, linebacker core, and secondary, it's tough to find a weakness. Atlanta and new head coach Dan Reeves are the last team to scrap the run and shoot. Look for them to establish the run before throwing the ball. They've acquired a reliable veteran quarterback in Chris Chandler who won't be asked to be the hero. More responsibility will be placed on their running back, Jamel Anderson, who ran for over 1,000 yards last season. Defensively, Atlanta finished dead last in interceptions, with the cornerbacks being the most unstable unit on the team. This could improve with the coaching change. St. Louis is a very young team that is looking to older coaches for leadership in Dick Vermeil and a host of assistants who once held jobs as head coaches around the league. Their number one draft pick, Orlando Pace, hopes to improve a poor offensive line which last year resulted in a sluggish running game and their quarterback, Tony Banks, getting the ball stripped 20 times. Somehow, their young rising star wide receiver, Isaac Bruce, was able to put together another great year. Defensively, the Rams have a solid defensive line, but as a whole, they're ranked near the bottom of most categories and need rebuilding. Hats off to Carolina. They've accomplished more in their first two years of play than most of the teams in their conference have in the past 15 years. The Panthers should pose quite an offensive threat this year with last season's team leader in reception yardage, Mark Carrier, and the maturing of their young quarterback, Kerry Collins. On defense, they are outstanding. Their all-pro linebacking core of Sam Mills, Kevin Green, and Lamar Lathan are the strength of a team that posted one of the stingiest points against averages in NFL history. With Ditka in charge, New Orleans is going back to the style of play that gave them some success in the early 90s. Defensively, they maintain a pretty good lineup and will be asked to step up to a more aggressive style. The offense will switch to a better ball control, run-oriented style, but will need to find help for the perennial all-pro tackle, William Rolfe, if they want to dominate the line of scrimmage. Green Bay is as complete a team as any in the league. They were the first team since the 72 Dolphins to lead the NFL in scoring offense and defense. If they have one concern, it's the offensive line which could use added depth. On defense, 
Green Bay is ranked as the hardest team in the league to score against. This was mostly due to a strong defensive line anchored by future Hall of Famer Reggie White and the strong play of Leroy Butler in the secondary. The league's MVP the past two years, Brett Favre, leads the offense at quarterback, and he does a nice job of spreading out his touchdown passes. The new coaching staff, headed by Bobby Ross, has their work cut out for them. Detroit's defense, especially the secondary, gives up too many big plays. They were ranked dead last in the NFL in red zone defense, surrendering a touchdown 61% of the time. The offense, despite an inconsistent front line, has a capable passing game with quarterback Scott Mitchell and wide receiver Herman Moore. But their outstanding running back, Barry Sanders, needs to get the ball more for them to return to the playoffs. Chicago has relied a great deal on turnovers to win ball games the past few years. On offense, their line is ranked among the league's best at protecting the quarterback and giving him time to spot his gifted wide receiver, Curtis Conway. Defensively, Chicago improved throughout the year and are tough to run against, a sign of good coaching from Dave Wanstead. However, they lack consistency and give up too many points, which often forces them to abandon the running game. Minnesota plays an exciting brand of football capable of scoring many points and creating a lot of turnovers. On offense, if they can improve their running game to prevent opponents from concentrating on defending the pass, their quarterback, Brad Johnson, should get the opportunity to find open receivers. On defense, Minnesota must put more emphasis on their run defense if they expect to make it past the first round of the playoffs this year. After finishing their 14th consecutive losing season, it's obvious that Tampa Bay has nowhere to go but up. They finished last year strong and are a serious playoff contender for the first time in many years. Offensively, the line needs to continue to play as a solid unit if they want their quarterback, Trent Dilfer, to ever reach his potential. Tampa Bay's defense is strong, especially their standout linebacker, Hardy Nickerson, and their young defensive back, Donnie Abraham, who emerged as the team's best player in the secondary, picking off five passes last year. Dallas has lost some of their talent, but they should remain one of the league's best for at least another year. Behind a powerful offensive line, their three superstars, Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith, and Michael Irvin, lead a team that is explosive and consistent. For their offense to be successful, they just need to remain healthy. On defense, they are strong, quick, and have one of the best secondaries in the league. A well-coached team, Philadelphia has a strong defense. The club has a capable front seven, but they could use more size and added depth while the secondary is young and talented. Offensively, the starting receivers, Irving Fryer and Chris T. Jones, are both great possession receivers, but they'll need to develop a deep threat to keep the defenses honest. Giving their quarterback more time is key, and Philadelphia improved its offensive line with the free agent signing of one of the game's best centers, Steve Everett. Washington has steadily improved the past few years under Norv Turner and may be ready to put together a great year. On offense, they utilize a well-balanced attack with several weapons, running back Terry Allen, wide receivers Michael Westbrook, and Henry Ellard. Defensively, despite a shaky performance last year, their defensive line showed potential. Their quick outside linebacker, Ken Harvey, is one of the league's best. New York has made many changes in their offense, defense, and coaching staff. For all of the parts to come together in one year will be difficult. They've kept the core of their offense together in Dave Brown and Rodney Hampton, but beyond that, the talent remains to be seen. They have lacked the necessary defense to win in the NFC East, and it will be tough to improve with all the changes. Arizona's defense has star players, especially at the cornerback position with all-pro Aeneas Williams, who turned in another great season last year, picking off six passes, but more importantly, he shut down opposing big play receivers. On offense, Arizona has a great receiving fullback in Larry Centers, but they're in tremendous need of a running game. They were forced into throwing the ball a great deal last year, which resulted in a league-worst 30 interceptions. Congratulations. I couldn't have done it any better myself. Here are the champions. The speed burst helps defenders as well as the ball carrier, but use it sparingly. After each time you use the speed burst during a play, you'll tire and run slower. When playing defense, keep your eye on the quarterback. He's usually looking at his primary receiver. This will give you a head start on which receiver to run to. When playing defense, the dive is the most effective way to tackle the ball handler but do it only if you're close because a missed tackle opens the door for a big play. When playing defense, 
Always be prepared to toggle to the defender nearest the ball handler. If you dive and miss him, toggle again to a new teammate. If you have fast and agile cornerbacks, go man to man. However, if they're not quite up to your opponent's receivers, try some zone defenses. Blitzing can be quite effective against a slow quarterback and those who don't scramble well. Try playing all the teams. Teams have different combinations of offensive formations to match their playing style. Is the game running too fast or too slow for you? Stop complaining and go to the option screen and adjust it. When looking downfield to pass, try the pump fake to fool the defense. Just make sure you have enough time to avoid being sacked. You can increase your chance of catching the ball if you'll use the turn to catch button when playing as the receiver. Before hiking the ball, use the fake snap button from time to time to keep the defense off balance. When you're the ball handler, spin to break tackles, but be careful, you'll have a higher chance of fumbling. If the ball is spotted on the hash and you need room to run a play, don't forget you can flip the play and go to the opposite side. When you're the ball handler and you're about to get tackled, try diving to get a few extra yards. When on defense, if your opponent passes and you're not near the target, toggle to a teammate and then try to jump and block the ball or intercept it. Be smart and use your blockers on kick returns. If you don't like your offensive plays ordered by formation, go to the option screen and change play call method to run pass to have them sorted by type of play. Do you want the game to play more like an arcade game? Go to the option screen and change human effect to high. When you need to conserve time on the clock, use the no huddle offense. Holding down the L1 and L2 buttons after a play will send your team directly back to the line of scrimmage. Don't call the same play over and over again. The defense will quickly figure out how to stop your play if you don't have variety in your play calling. Be sure to take advantage of the special plays. Use quarterback Neal to run out the clock without risking injury or turnover. Use stop clock to save precious seconds at the end of each half in the two-minute drill. Use set audibles in the pause menu to customize the audibles your quarterback can call out of each formation. Be sure to use the play editor to create the perfect play. This feature allows you to design plays, save them on a memory card, and use them in the game. When selecting a play, keep in mind that animating arrows indicate run plays on offense and blitzers on defense. If you need more time to pick a play, go to the penalty option screen and turn delay of game off. Running plays with power in the name are designed to have the quarterback snap the ball when the man in motion is in line where the running back wants to go. Hurdling is a great way to avoid a diving tackler, but if you get hit, you'll have a higher chance of fumbling or getting injured. A key to winning is often controlling the clock. Use the X button on the play select screen to count down the clock quickly before you choose your play. Receiver icons grow bigger when your receiver becomes open. Zone defenses are useful in preventing the big play. You can spot a zone defense on the play call screen by the lines indicating what area of the field each defender is responsible for. On the play call screen, formations are listed with the team's better passing formations toward the bottom. Don't hold the ball too long as a quarterback. If you don't get sacked first, you're likely to get a holding call against your offensive line. When running a no-huddle offense, remember to call audibles to keep the defense from knowing what play you're running. If you don't like the defense you've called when the offense lines up at the line of scrimmage, you can call an audible. Getting sick of penalties or injuries? You can customize the game to your taste. You'll find a whole host of options to turn on or off on the game option screen. Before hiking the ball, use the fake snap button from time to time to keep the defense off balance. But beware, this may cause one of your linemen to jump. You can toggle your defender as soon as the offense breaks the huddle. Learn to use the R1 and L1 buttons as a more effective way of toggling. Let's not take anything for granted. Let's go out there and play the game the way we know how to play it. With everything we've got. Let's lay it on the line, let's go. You know how we play. 16 minutes of football. We don't let up on anybody. You don't ever hit him lightly. You hit him as hard as you can hit him. Let's get after him. Let's do it.
What a performance. You scored enough points to beat just about anyone. You must be catching on to some of my secrets. Well, were you ever outclassed today? Obviously, you're not ready for this level of competition. Try an easier difficulty level. With your quarterback getting the ball to his receivers like that, it must be driving their defensive coordinator crazy. Not a good offensive effort. Receivers dropping passes. Quarterback can't find the open man. Your team needs practice. You ran the ball down their throats and put up some impressive rushing numbers. Good job. You should try to balance out your offensive attack by handing off the ball more often. Establishing a running game will open things up for the pass. You played a clean game that was good, disciplined, hard-nosed football. Great job. Those penalties really added up and cost you the ball game. If you don't clean up your act, you'll be your own worst enemy. That was a lot of pressure you put on their quarterback. He never had a chance. He's got one sore week ahead of him. Hey, you didn't do too well in the sacks category today. You can't give your opponent all day to complete a pass. When a defense hits as hard as your team did today, they're bound to make positive things happen and force turnovers. You simply can't turn the ball over that much and still expect to win. Your players should get together and try to re-legalize stick them. With all of those first downs, you really wore out their defense and kept their offense off the field and out of the end zone. Talk about a tight game. That was too close for comfort. That was a close one. Congratulations. That was an exciting game to watch. Man, you showed no mercy. Maybe set the difficulty higher next time. You crushed them. I couldn't have done better myself. Great game. You really pounded them. Wow, that was a tough one. Better luck next time. Oh, come on. You should have won that one. Get your button gear. If you can't make first downs, you can't expect to win the game. Looks like you'll need some offensive practice. You'll find it through the main menu. Don't take it too hard. They were tough today. Are you sure you're ready for the NFL? Ah, uh, too bad. Well, you can always play in Europe. Hey, that was embarrassing. And you call yourself a gamer? Tough break. Personally, I've lost once in the playoffs and it was rough. Hang in there and get them next year. All right, you're off to a good start. Few teams that win in the first round go all the way, but you might just be the team. All right, you're off to a good start. Now only one team can go all the way, but you just might be that team. You made a lot of gutsy calls out there on fourth down, and it really paid off. This looks to be your year. It'll be important for your team to feed off the momentum you gathered in this game if you're going to have any success in the conference championships. Great game. You're on fire. Don't let this one get to your head. Stay focused. Win one more, and you're the champions. So close. But don't talk the talk if you can't walk the walk. Next time, be a little more conservative on fourth down. You have heard of punting, haven't you? You really moved the football today. You dominated this game in total yards. You're simply going to have to generate more offense if you want to compete in this league. Your total yards were dismal. Now that was an impressive passing performance. Just look at your passing yards. Your quarterback and receivers were hot today. You should try to balance out your offensive attack by getting the ball in the air to your receivers more often. Hey, it's a tight game, but we should have been up on this team two touchdowns. Let's make sure we do it in the second half. Hey, you're up on this team, but now's the time to pour it on. Let's get after them. Let's put them away in the third quarter. You guys are pathetic. As far down as you are, you can quit if you want to right now. But I don't think you're going to quit. Let's go out there and show some pride. The way we played that first half was embarrassing. I know you're way down, but you can come back. Let's play the fourth quarter like we know how to play it. Hey, we're way up in this ball game, but you know how we play. 60 minutes of football. We don't let up on anybody. Let's go out there and play the way we know how to play and pour it on. I told you before the game that we'd win this game in the second half. Hey, it's a tight ball game. can go either way. Now we see who really wants it. Win it in the fourth quarter. Hey, it's a tight game, but we know we're a fourth quarter team. We'll win it in the second half. It's a tight game, but we should have been way up on this team. Let's not make the mistakes in the second half. Let's win it in the fourth quarter. You guys are lucky that it's a tight ball game. You shouldn't even be in the ball game, but fortunately we are. Now let's get to playing right in the second half. Let's win it in the fourth quarter. The way you guys played in the first half, this game should be over, but we're still in it. Now let's make sure we go out there and play the way we know how to play. Let's win the thing in the fourth quarter. Let's not look at that scoreboard. We're way up. But we've got to take the second half like it's nothing to nothing. Start this game over. Don't let them come back on you. 